Hey everybody, so I want to do this video and my cat might jump up and decide she wants to be part of the video, which is fine. So I thought I'd take a moment before I get started on my next video, which is going to be about Jebba Fall. And instead, yeah, come on, come here. As I thought I'd talk a little bit about why even do Enochian, right? Or why do, I'm not going to say like why do magic, that's kind of a bigger one. But I'll, I'll add that to it. So, and what is the deal with Enochian, right? So I think what makes it hard is that Enochian is pretty esoteric. And there's a lot of entities and it's a lot of stuff that we're not used to um, in America. And it's also really not very necessary. Um, there is no call in the Bible <laughs> for you to make contact with angels. There really isn't. You don't have to. Um, they're acknowledged, but really, if you look at exoteric Christianity, um, and even, you know, you know, I mean, there's no real need for it, right? Now, in Catholicism, you can definitely pray to angels, just like any other saint, right? Any saint in the sense of somebody who's up in heaven, and ask them to continue to pray on your behalf to God, right? But the whole point is, is that, you know, you know, the, the, the way I look at it, and I'm not an expert in Catholicism, so a lot of what I've had to learn is kind of secondhand. But basically, the idea is, strikes me, and from the videos I've seen on it, is that you're asking people who sort of have like specialties or beings who have specialties, saying, okay, this thing for healing, please take care of this, or this thing for um, lost objects, for example. Uh, I think it's uh, St. George is the one you would go to. Stuff like that. And there's even like a recent saint or a saint maybe about to become sainted uh, of social media. Matteo, I think, is his, his, is his name, but I could be wrong. Anyway, the whole thing, the whole concept is basically you're going to these entities that have various specialties. Now, the thing about God is that he encompasses all specialties, right? So when you're doing any kind of prayer to God, God's got it. You know, he can do that, right? So, so okay. So basically, I just kind of talked us out of, you know, can't, right? Just pray to God. It's fine. And in a lot of ways, that that's true, right? But for somebody like me, who, I mean, I grew up in, and I'll just tell the story. Uh, I grew up in, and you've probably heard parts of it, but I grew up in a fundamentalist Christian household. And there's a lot of rules about do this, don't do that, and stuff like that. And I do recommend um, looking into some of Ramsey Dukes' videos. He's great. He's fantastic. Really, really learn from people who have, who have gone before and done some of the big, amazing things. You know, he's a, he's a good example of somebody who's, uh, has knowledge and con conversation of the Holy Guardian Angel, for example, of his Holy Guardian Angel. Anyway, he talks about, hang on, I lost my train of thought. I'll come back to him in a second. Um, but there's a lot of, uh, there was a lot of rules, right? And well, anyway, he, he does talk about how, you know, there are sort of like different kinds of uh, religious progressions, right? That, and he sort of views the Lima as along this scale. So for example, if you're, you have a young child, you would say, okay, got to do this, do that, don't do this, don't do that, right? Um, that's his analogy. So I'm not speaking for myself. I'm just, I just find it useful. So anyway, that's kind of how I grew up. And even though we did have this message about Christ's love and stuff like that, and that, that always really spoke most closely to my heart. And by the way, I'm also 
have from both sides of my family uh, pastors, but neither one of which I grew up with. Um, my grandfather on my dad's side uh, was uh, an event. It was a, a Lutheran pastor. He was with the ALC, the American Luther Church, Lutheran Church, I believe it was, before it merged with the ELCA. I don't think he was a fan of that because he was pretty conservative. But he was very gentle, very loving person. Um, I only met him a, a handful of times, like maybe two or three times. And my mom was uh, friends with him and my grandmother. And they were both, both my grandparents on that side were pretty strongly, um, pretty strongly c Christian and my, uh, and very conservative as well. And, uh, I don't want to speak to my dad's experience cause you know, it's his story to tell if he wants to, but I know that it, a lot of what he grew up with in terms of religion wasn't, didn't never sat very well with him. And that's about all I'll say, because like I said, you know, I don't want to get into something wrong or blah, blah, blah. So, and then on my mom, but you know, that was sort of the thing. And then my mom, of course, I've probably alluded to this, but she was very big about, okay, you got to do this and you got to do that. And she has videos online. And for the most part, you know, she was very, she is a very intense person. Uh... And, but there was this change that happened and I can sort of pinpoint what was going on, uh, astrologically, <laughs> but at any rate, I won't do that. Um, but she took this turn when I was about 10 years old and she went from more or less what I would say standard, you know, you to, you know, teaching you, helping you grow up, stuff like that and going to church and, you know, a, a moderate ELCA church. Um, she went from that to, and she took a conservative turn. And all of a sudden it was about how Jesus was coming back soon. And I'm trying to remember their name. I think it was the Lalande brothers or the Lond brothers, Lalande brothers. Um, one of them is the producer. One or both of them, I think, was the producer of the Left, Be Left Behind movies. Uh, she took a turn and she started watching their videos and she was all about how the end times were coming and how we needed to, you know, feel this way or that way. And it was a lot of rules and it was a lot, when you're trying to figure out what your faith is like um, and what, what kind of a path you want to walk with God, that's not helpful it's not helpful because you want to make friends, but why make friends if the world's about to end, right? You want to, you need to start thinking about a career, but why have, why make, give any thought to that if the world's going to end? So you, at the very time in which you need to develop agency, you're not doing that. And so it's very scary and you don't really have a simple way of processing normal stuff. It's all through this lens. And it's funny because, um, you know, I've seen a lot of documentaries about cults and people caught up in these very, and, uh, uh, conservative movements. And it's hard to watch because some of it sort of like takes me back, but you can see sort of the, the in-group, out-group kind of thing, like us versus them, and really, at the end of the day, that's not healthy at all, right? Like, you don't learn, you don't learn who you are and what you're about. You don't learn how to get along in a, in a human way with other people. You don't learn anything about yourself that way, right? And you certainly can't develop and express really good, true spiritual love towards another person with that filter on, because they're just going to go be, you're going to be raptured and who cares about them anyway. But also, how are you, if you can't even do that in a, like a normal, healthy way, how are you going to deal with relationships, right? So...
so I'm bringing all of this up to say I grew up with something that was pretty hard and something pretty traumatic. And I think because of that, I had to like do a lot of self deprogramming and a lot of exploration. And I got into yoga and I got into, I liked just exploring a lot of different ideas and, and it was all really helpful, you know, learning about philosophy and you start developing that sense of agency, but really you're not, what you're trying to do is, is, is engage in sense making. And even though that's great, that's wonderful. And that's necessary. You're not actually getting at the wound of not, um, sorry about that phone went off reminders, right? You you need a reminder to turn off your reminders. So anyway, you don't feel at ease with the wound of not, it, you don't you don't heal that wound of not feeling at ease with yourself as a person in this world right there's that anxiety and i wish i could just say well you know go ahead and see this thing and then just work on it right and pray to god for that and see this other thing and just work on it and pray to god for that uh, but what really happens is, is you realize your mind kind of needs a 360 degree cleaning and a lot of things need to be healed simultaneously. So, so you see that where I'm going with this is that there's a lot of different interconnected issues, right? So to say healing is like, okay, well, who are you to be healed? Because if that's not clear, okay, well, I need to know who I am. But if, how can you know who you are if you're not healed? You see, there's sort of like, there's some simultaneous interconnected problems. And it gets harder to deal with that. From just, it's like you need to know where to start. Figuring that out is hard. So one of the things that you can do is, you know, you can pray to God to help you know what to do, you know. So these are like, these are just ideas, right? I mean, everybody's going to have their own approach. I'm trying to, to get you to consider some of the things that you might want to think about as you approach any spiritual undertaking, right? So I'm going to touch on, you know, again, and then I'll wrap this up so I can start on the uh, final video in this series, which is about Jebbafall. So, so for me, right, what are angels and what are they about? Uh, I'm not of the view that they're um, psychological, per se. I think the problem is that, and I've, I've, I've listened to other magicians talk about this and Alexander F. I've just been re-listening to him on the What Magic Is This, his appearance on the What Magic Is This podcast because Doug has like so many great things going on. It's not even funny. Um, and he works really hard and I really recommend him. And he's great. He's all around really doing all the things that you would hope for in such a podcast, right? I'm just doing little Enochian videos here. Um, so anyway, Alexander, and I think Douglas seemed to be on the same page. He was talking about, you know, when you engage in these practices, it gets pretty hard to, to land on the internality of these things. But at the same time, it's also hard to say, well, they're just external, right? And the problem is, is like, there's a very deep spiritual knowing that is always going to be processed through the heart mind. I'll just use that, those two terms together. So, but I do believe, right, I'm, I'm not a solipsist. I don't believe that I completely make up my own world. I do believe that 
this mind that is speaking right now is part of a much larger mind that is God, right? And I also believe that God is simultaneously a whole, but also is having a lot of experiences as individuals for purposes known only to God, right? And there's no part of any one of our experiences that is not known. So for me, what the important takeaway is that I believe angels are part of this mind of God, but they're also individual entities, just like us, right? Just as corporeal, or they can, they can incorporate into an existing person, right? And this is where that flow between your mind and theirs and being able, them being able to work with you when your own conscious mind is, is tuned down. And maybe it's just an archetype, right? But even an archetype, there's something that is, there is some pattern that is being flowed into yourself through your own mind. So it's always that issue, right? Now, I say internal, external, and, you know, some of you, you know, I know if part of me, you know, it's more smart alecky me from maybe 10 years ago would say, whoa. Yeah, so I don't, I don't really believe in, I, these are terms of convenience. Ultimately, I believe it's all non-dual. I believe that it's, it's, a sim, it's a single mind, right? A single clear mind that has, from which all emanate, for lack of a better term, or maybe a better term is project with some obscurations. <laughs> and the nice thing about the Buddhist practice is, okay, you can get, those obscurations can be overcome, can be cleared up so that you can, your own consciousness can go back into the clear mind. And that clear mind is the shared clear mind that every conscious thing has. And that obviously would be God, you know, but I would say the clear heart mind is probably an even better term, right? So anyway, so why even deal with, with angels? Well, again, getting back to it, specific things, specific ways that you need to undo yourself and focus on, that's one thing, right? Um, consciousness change, stuff like that. Um, we all learn from experience, but also just the experience that there is, not just God, okay, but all of God's creation, right? The case to be made for, for these esoteric pra praxes or practices is that you can have your consciousness shift to become aware of a very wide world of spirit, vast, extraordinarily vast. And also so that you can find paths to individual liberation, salvation, and the the reason for the reason for that is it's one thing to honor the unity of the divi of the divine the the vast loving that he if you want to gender god has for us the the immense soul and connection that we have to him all of these things are things to definitely explore and be honored and just exult in, right? We get to be alive. We get to, we get to find other beings in this world, people and animals, and we get to, to show love for, for the pets that we can have or the large animals. If you know, you work, you know, whatever. Okay. You know, let's say you love horses just as an example, but you can also not only do that and not only be amazed and in awe of this wonderful world, 
but you can and 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 give in love to each other and 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 love God for this the wonderfulness of this experience because that's something that I was and by the way that this is something that I was really cut off from when I was younger right um and by the way the story of my mom does not it's no longer relevant to me but I do bring it up for that in the sense that it was it was traumatizing but I've moved or I've been moving past it I mean the trauma is always there but it's sort of like with age, it sort of like recedes into the background. You know, I'm working on it. <laughs> You're always working on it, right? So, but the 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 reason that we have the reason I would the case I would make for Enochian, and it's not for everybody, for sure, absolutely not. Um, but the case I would make it for it if somebody were interested and wanted to know why, which is the point of this video is that here's the chance to honor God, right? And love God by seeing this vastness that he also obscures except to people who he calls to try to explore it. So it's a little circular, right? But if you're called to it, great. And this is, that would be the reason why. Um, but if you're not called to it, God doesn't want, God, God, it's not that God doesn't want you to, right? Or it's just like, it's not your thing, man. It's not, it's not your, uh, it's not your bag, yo. <laughs> so, so anyway. Uh, and for me, that has been particularly healing, right? That's the other part of this. So, yeah, and I will say this much too, that if you, you know, it's, it's, gr it's especially good to approach this with a, with an open heart, right? And caring and loving and all of that. And don't be, don't be surprised if you get confronted with different things, strange things, things that you learn about yourself, but things that also get you more interested in this universe that, that God's created, right? All of these are wonderful. Um, so, so be excited, you know? <laughs> so anyhow, all right, much love to you all. I'm going to try to get this up and I'm also going to try to get a Jebafall ish video up and uh, good luck out there, and I love you all, and uh, that's it. Remember to, uh, remember to be grateful, you know. There's no, there's no guarantee with anything in this life, you know, and so you've, you're here right now. And for me, the, the Holy Enochian journey has gotten me to be much more grateful to God and much more in tune and aligned with God, and I hope that... Um, I think that if, if that happens to you, consider yourself very blessed. All right. Love you all. Bye.